So without any further ado, let me ask Steve to, uh, uh, to join us and uh, uh, we look forward to his discussion. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, just going to grab a glass of water. Borada, Pope, uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great day thus far. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to talk to you about some of the lessons I've learned. I quit my old job uh, three and a half years ago um, to start the UK's first ever uh, recruitment consultancy that offered video job ads. And it was going to be amazing. It was going to make me millions and millions of pounds. Uh, we were going to get a great house somewhere posh like Cowbridge. Um, my kids were going to be the brightest kids ever, more beautiful than any others. Um, and, and then I quit my job. And suddenly, I could do anything I wanted. And I was obviously going to start this business. I'd helped, for the 12 years prior to that, uh, build a multi-million pound business that was massively successful. Um, I'd set up the satellite office in, in Cardiff, recruited a big team with me. It was all great fun. But I used to get up in the morning, um, and I'd get up at whatever time, but I'd be in the office by 8, and I used to get home at 7. And, uh, and that was good. I was getting paid loads of money, like lots and lots of cash, um, which is exciting and good, and we bought a big house and all of this good stuff. Um, but then, yeah, you, you kind of... That was me, Dome New Media. I used to run a company called Dome New Media, and we were placing people with Google, with Canon. We recruited the entire engineering team for Shazam in the UK. Um, we helped All Saints bring their entire e-commerce offering in-house. Doing massive stuff, yeah, really exciting, supposedly amazing things. And I collected, I kid you not, tens of thousands of these, yeah? I've got like hundreds upon hundreds. I was about to throw them out to you, but yeah, I, I got these out of the attic last night. <laughs> um, and that's kind of where they've stayed, really. Um, and there's great job titles on all of these people um, for really impressive companies. And I quit. And, uh, and there's a thing called the humble brag, where people talk about stuff in a kind of demeaning way, uh, but in a backhanded way, they're complimenting themselves, yeah? So I've kind of done the humble brag there. So I'm going to move on to the me now. This is me, and I'm not going to mess around. I'm not going to bullshit. I started the first uh, recruitment consultancy to offer better video job ads. I'm a co-founder of the best beard oil and shaving oil in the world. I'm a band manager of the next big band. Um, I'm a co-founder of a software product, as a gentleman earlier mentioned, that's going to transform decision making. Creative agency founder, compere of the most successful night of talks in Cardiff. Uh, what else do I do? <laughs> um, I run Wales' biggest photography club. I run Cardiff's big, biggest book club. And I'm dad to the best kids in the world and the best wife in the world. So that's me. No bullshit. <laughs> I do all of these things, okay? Um, and I'm just going to talk you through what life is like doing this. Yeah? So every person I meet and I explain this stuff to, I'm, I'm like, I'm a plate spinner. Yeah? This is what I do professionally. I spin plates. I'm not as talented as this guy, though. <laughs> he was incredible. But moving on. And this is how that manifests itself. These are all the different brands and things that I'm involved with. Small Joys, as we mentioned, is a creative agency. We've already done work for Visit Wales. Uh, we've already done work for uh, Dot Wales, Dot Cymru. Uh, we're about to hopefully get uh, Dour Cymru on. Um, and yes, yeah, Sport Wales and loads of other things. And that's come through through Do Loop, uh, which is the thing that's going to change decision making. I run Ignite Cardiff. I'm the band manager for Climbing Trees. Who knows Climbing Trees? Hands up. Nobody knows. Oh, some people know Climbing Trees. They're going to be massive. Yeah, they're, they're Wales' big, next big band. Maybe like the Manic Stereophonics. I was on the Smash with them on Friday. We could, they had to go to a VIP bar. I wanted to go. And they said, well, we'll get you in. I was like, well, how? Be our band manager. So sometimes you have to blag this stuff, yeah? <laughs> I'm not really their band manager, but we genuinely had this conversation about, well, could it happen? Yeah, could we do this? And the way my mind works now that I no longer work for other people is that um, I always try to say yes. I always look at stuff and go, that could be massively exciting, yeah? That could be really, really cool. Um, and I urge you all to do this. I urge you all to be more open to the possibilities of other things. 
There's a great company in Wales that has a mandate of do one thing well. And I'm not sure I go with that. I'm not sure that I believe doing one thing really well is the best we can do for ourselves and our families. Well, a recruitment consultancy, Old Faithful is fantastic, shaving oil and beard oil, and a bunch of other stuff. So, <laughs> you got a glimpse there, didn't you? Okay, so, um, so this, before BuzzFeed and before, uh, uh, like, you know, Facebook and Twitter and all of those things, believe it or not, I'm not 25. I, I was around, like, in, when the internet came about, and I remember those email circulars that used to come around. And this next one is like a, a bastardized version of one. Um, but it's how you behave as a bloke in a urinal. And so, <laughs> it's a bit gross, yeah, I, I, didn't, I couldn't edit, I didn't have time to edit the last one out. Um, but, I think when you come to conferences, the opposite is true, okay? So I urge you all later on today, actually, I'm going to ask you to do it now. I want nobody sat at the ends of these rows. So I want everyone to squeeze into the middle of the rows that you're in. Sit next to the person you're, you're nearest to. Don't be shy. Come on, you as well. Don't be shy. Move up. Move up. There you go. Squeeze in. Squeeze in. Squeeze in. <coughs> Don't be shy. Come on. No end seats. Okay. Now, some of you are going to be sat next to people you don't know. So I'd like you to turn around and say hello to that person and get their name. Okay. 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 Come on, nobody's name is that long. Okay, okay, but seriously, I love that sound. I love that sound. Yeah, that's new people coming together. And the ones that were going on at the end, I think you guys have got a chance of doing something together. There was a smile, there was a spark, there was something there that meant you didn't just flaccidly shake their hand and say, oh yeah, I'm Steve, nice to meet you. What, what's this idiot up to? There was somebody who kind of engaged in it, yeah? And saw the opportunity that I'm talking about. When you meet new people, lots of things are possible. So weirdly, this talk is going to kind of flip, and it's not going to be about the things that I've learned. It's the things that I've learned from combining with other people and the, the genius of, of working with other people that are so much more talented than me, that are much, much better than, than me at what they do. Okay, we were going to run this. This is Doloop. Kind of put that in. When you get Wi-Fi access, if, are anyone struggling with Wi-Fi access? I can't get any. Okay, so bit.ly slash D15, you have to do the capital D at the start there, and then do loop, d double o l double o p. And it's just a single question. It will take you, once you get to it, it'll take you less than a second to answer, okay? I'm really intrigued to see the response to this uh, question set. Anyone got the questions up just yet? No? Okay, shit Wi-Fi. Um, sorry, no offense. <laughs> busy, busy Wi-Fi. Okay, so what has this all led to? Well, it's led to this realization. Um, I, this is courtesy of a guy called James Wallman. These are uh, lino prints that I did myself uh, uh, over the weekend. And it's led to this realization that no matter how hard you chase a dream, you can go at that dream for as long as you want. You may never reach that dream. And if you sacrifice all else at the altar of that dream, you may never have any decent memories to take with you. Yeah. So, if I, if I got hit, yeah, and I chased that dream, and I died on the way home today, you know, and I'd got that dream, I'd bequeath a wrecked Porsche to someone. And that's not, that's not how people speak, is it? People don't say, oh yeah, Steve Dimmick died, fucking shame that car's gone. Yeah, the, people are going to say they miss the person, yeah, they miss, they miss what that person brought into the world. And... Whatever dream you're chasing, make sure that along the way you have some milestones that you're able to go back and say, wow, that was incredible. I'm so glad we downed tools and we did that off-site thing. I'm so glad that we told our staff they could come in whatever time they want. So the, the people that I do have, my, my recruitment company, we offer 50 days holiday a year. Hands up who offers 25 here. Yeah? 20? It's not much. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. 
offer people uh, an experience, a memory that they will cherish, and you'd be amazed what you get in return. This is Climbing Trees, the band I run. Um, but the reason I've put them up is the other thing that they were very nice to say was, oh, I've, I gave them some beard oil. Just, there you go, you've got big beards. And they were like, okay, you can be the official provider of beard oil to the climbing trees. And that, for me, was like a fantastic memory. You can have some, sir. You've got a magnificent beard there. Putting Santa in his place. So this got me thinking. I, I deleted all my slides last night at 3 a.m. I woke up, my youngest volleyed me in the face, and I woke with a jolt. And I was going to stand up. I was going to be like these guys that were here. I was going to wear a suit and some posh shoes, and uh, I was going to tell you about the, you know, the million pound business I built and all this kind of stuff. That's not me. Yeah, that's what, and I realize that what I'm about is, <sighs> is, is about making my kids the best that they can be. Yeah? So I want to demonstrate to them that you can be anything, but you don't have to do something. Okay? So you might not have kids, you might be kind of thinking, okay, this is all a bit soppy and weird. But you've got friends, you've got mums and dads, you've got partners, you've got people who look to you as a kind of source of inspiration. Who thinks one of their parents is their hero? I do, yeah? Yeah, we all think of parents. So if you have kids, there's a very strong likelihood they're going to look up to you for inspiration and, and a source for... Uh, so I asked Edis this morning, I said, what do you want to be in the future? Shout out some answers that uh, an eight-year-old girl would say. A mermaid? Cool. Any others? Ballet dancer. Ballet dancer, dancer's popular. A vet, cool. Yeah, any others in the middle? Nothing from the middle? A prime minister, okay, cool. So her answer was, Dad, I want to be a scientist. And I, you know, damn near crashed that car. It's a shitty little Honda, it's not a... <laughs> um, but then the beautiful thing that happened, and very nearly made certain that I wasn't here today, was she said, and I want to be an artist. And that's, that's massive in my life, yeah? So that means that things are going right, yeah? And I want to be a hairdresser. I was like, yes, get in there. So I asked this dude, this is Slay, he's just turned six. Slay, Beth T is your board. What, what do you want to be? Slay said, I want to be a footballer. Slay, you know, lives and dies by the ball. He is only about the ball right now. But I pushed him a bit harder. We, we went a bit further down the school run. And for the first time ever, Slay said, I want to be an adventurer. And it was like, that's absolutely amazing, yeah? So think about the people that depend on you, that look to you. And what do you demonstrate to them that, that makes them think, you know what? I can push on. I can be better than I am right now. What can she be? She can't speak for herself. So I'll speak for her. This is Kasia, my youngest, that woke me up at 3 a.m. and totally flipped this uh, presentation. So she can be anything, yeah? There's infinite possibilities. I'd love it if she was Prime Minister. That would be a fantastic thing. So who can I be? I can just be the best person that I can for this group of incredible people that pretty much are the reason that I do all of these things I do. <clears throat> so this is... I, I was going to kind of quote loads of other people, and that went against this thing of being me. And this is this coming to my head generally today. It's not the days in your life, it's the best days in your life. So is your best day going to be sat in a darkened conference room, surrounded by pale male stale blokes in suits on the hottest bloody day of the year? Or is it going to be something else tomorrow or the day after? Yeah? And that's the kind of thing that I, when I was gathering these, like, you know, these, are the, these were my money tickets, yeah? Every one of these was a chance to do business with these people. And it was my chance to bring in more revenue and more money and more profit. And you'll gather these today. You'll gather these little tickets. And I, but I urge you to not rely solely on that, to kind of push on and do new stuff, yeah? Just try things, try new things. What symbol is this? Louder. Infinity, of course it is. Infinity, yeah. It's not a gay infinity, it's a, a rainbow infinity to, to show um, that Cardiff Start, the, the group that was mentioned earlier, for me has been massively important. Um, don't be sh just as you shouldn't be humble about your brags, don't be shy about your insecurities. If you don't get stuff, get help. Because otherwise that stuff's going to fester. 
Yeah, I've had, I, I, do, I don't get tax, I don't get finance. I've had bailiff's letters. Yeah? My wife and my kids in this house, we could very well have lost it all because I was ignorant to all of that stuff. I needed help. But I was embarrassed because I was trying to be the startup leader, founder that I, you know, I like to portray myself as in that previous life. But I was embarrassed because surely someone who's running these businesses should know all of this stuff. And I never asked anyone. So I just swept it under the rug and kept it and it'll go away. We very nearly lost our house. And all of those things that I'm doing for my kids, for my wife, for all of these people that matter so much for me, it very nearly went. Cardiff Start has been amazing for that. I'm looking to Neil, because Neil's a massive proponent of it, but I know that Tom Gallard here sure, and there's a bunch of other people who have probably used it. But there's, if, it's not, if you're not from Cardiff, still use Cardiff Start. Yeah, there's loads of people who are starting businesses that are looking for inspiration, and they know shit loads more than you about the stuff that you don't know. So ask them, be open, be honest about it. So these are the people that let me do all of the things that I do. So we've got Laura that helps me run the book club. We've got Steph and Tash that help me run uh, Instagram as Wales, Instagram as Cymru. We've got Sam, who's like the genius that built Dooloop in a week. Uh, we've got Mark, who's my creative director and like a beacon of light. So I, we worked together for four months uh, before I found out that Mark was a church-going teetotal guy. Yeah? And I, every time I met with him, I would suggest, let's meet in a pub. And so we'd go and I'd order the strongest beer and Mark would turn up and open a, order a Coke. And, it was, and that's beautiful, because we, we just get on with what we're doing, what we love, what we're together about. Um, that's Gareth. Gareth's like one of the most handsome men you'll ever meet. He's the guy who concocted uh, the oils. So he kind of screwed his back up. And how am I doing for time? Sorry, I'm rambling a bit, but... Five minutes left, cool. Um, and that's Gareth, and yeah, he's super handsome, but this is the beautiful thing. He stands there, he smiles, and then he opens his mouth, and he's fucking from Merthyr, and he talks like this, and he's got the thickest accent you've ever heard. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. And he's really quick about where he talks. So, like, super enthusiastic guy who really gets these oils, yeah? It is a great pleasure to work with Gareth. He's crazy. Like he, the things he suggests are just stupid, but he suggests them. He puts them out there, yeah? And so we can then channel that enthusiasm and excitement. The amazing team at Ignite. Hands up if you've been to Ignite Cardiff. Anyone, yeah? Like, I stand there. I get to do this stuff, the fun bit. But these guys are so much more, like, they are it. I'm just the, the, the bad voice of it, basically. Uh, that's my brother. He's now helping me build Dimix, uh, the recruitment consultancy. And this guy is Dan Kieran. Um, so, <laughs> so, okay, how much have I got left? So this, yeah, this is Dan. And Dan, who's heard of Letters of Note? An amazing book, yeah? So Letters of Note is a fantastic, buy it, basically. You, sh you have to have this book in your life. It's an amazing collection of letters from one person to another. There's a letter from Iggy Pop to a fan who wrote to him saying about how she was going to kill herself. And he writes back telling her that she's like a beautiful thing. And it's like really heart-wrenching. There's letters from presidents that to, and, and it's just incredible. But they couldn't find a publisher. They couldn't find a publisher. Dan started a thing called Unbound, uh, which is a kind of crowdsourcing publishing platform. And they allow their subscribers to vote for the book that should be published next. Through Unbound, Letters of Note went, uh, went on to be published. Massive success, bought by Penguin. Letters of Note 2 is about to, be, to come out, yeah? So the reason I mention this is I met Dan on the weekend. After I was sat down for lunch, chatting to a lady sat next to me. I'd not met this lady. I sat next to her. You know the thing here, yeah? So I didn't sit at the end of the table. I sidled up and sat next to her. Um, and I was chatting to her, and I mentioned Letters of Note. And she said, oh, well, Dan is the publisher that published Letters of Note. If I'd sat at the end of that table, I would never have had that meeting. So then Dan and I get talking, and we're chatting away, lots of beer. And, and then a barn owl flies out of the barn that we're kind of stood next to. And both of us are like, oh my god, look, look, and trying to get the attention of the people around us. And this is like one of the lights that people hide under a bushel. You've got stuff inside you that because you're pushing ahead with your startup, like birds of prey are massive to me. My dad instilled this in me, and yeah, and it's just a huge, huge thing. 
but I've never pushed on with it because I don't know anything about how to start this stuff. I, I love them, but I don't know enough about them. And I met with Dan, he's like, oh my God, I'm exactly the same. So, I love them so much that I had registered for woodland stock. You know when you drive along the motorway or the uh, country roads and you see woodland for sale? My idea is that I'm going to buy a woodland and we're going to turn that into like a, a sanctuary um, and we can fly birds and teach kids how to love birds of prey like, like I do. But I just didn't know anyone, basically. So they, I've been getting these emails forever, well, for the last few years. Met Dan, we got talking, we were like, let's do it. We're going to make it happen. And then Dan, who's got like a, a zillion followers on Twitter and runs an amazingly successful business, wrote to me at midnight last night. And, and yeah, and it, I'm actually going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to start a nature sanctuary, a, a bird sanctuary. Um, that basically these people, whoever puts money into it, they get the coordinates and nobody else knows about it. So, um, I don't know, I meant to delete this. So, who knows who this is? Sorry? I, thanks. There's not many pictures of me in black and white. It's really harsh. Um, <laughs> so it's Bernie Taupin, yeah? Bernie's written some of the greatest songs in history, but nobody knows who Bernie is. Yeah, everyone knows Elton John, of course. So my thing is that you, you've got to collaborate to push on. Find people who excite you. And when you shook hands, if that person smiled or if there was a spark, then there's potential there. So go and get their business card, not the person who's speaking, who it looks impressive and, wow, you know, I've got to meet that person and push on. Find the person that you catch a smile with, that there's a glint in their eye, that there's a bit of chemistry there. And you never know what might happen next, yeah? So focus on creating the memories and not chasing the dreams. Okay, so these are my lessons from the trench. I'm guessing this is not going to be like many of the talks today, yet, but I hope that some of you have got, got something out of it. So team up with someone you can share a laugh with. They don't have to laugh at you. And I found that with Mark. Mark doesn't get my jokes, but we're willing to kind of have a giggle together. Start. So get the fucking plate up there, yeah? Even if you have to blag, even if you have to... I don't know, even if you have to smash some plates, get the plate up there, because if it doesn't spin, it ain't going to keep spinning. Be yourself, not what you're supposed to be. So don't try to be the person that you want to be in five years' time. There's this thing about, about dressing like the people you want to be. Yeah, don't chase that shit. Be yourself. Do whatever you need to do to, to push on. You can do anything, but you don't have to. So I wanted to start a multi-million pound company. Today, I drove my kids to school. Today, I'm going to pick them up from school, and I'll do that tomorrow, and the next day, and the day after. Yeah? I work less than half the hours I used to work, and we're still making, well, not making as much money, but it's like 80, 90% of what I used to, because I'm doing stuff that excites me. Memories last longer than dreams. And that is me. Thank you very much.